Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming to our Media Training for Success course. Um, I wanted to really put together a course for you um, that really highlights what to do when you score that big media interview. Um, so many times we, we've we read things on what to do when it's a crisis type of interview, but this really focuses on what to do when it's in TV, print, radio, or other type of interview that is positive in nature and there to help you get the best outcome and there to, to really share information about your organization. Um, so let's hop into it. Um, I want to talk about what happens before the interview. So a television interview, a newspaper or magazine article, maybe a radio guest spot. Every media opportunity is exciting, but each one may require a bit of a different type of inter interview. Um, and that's really what we want to talk about today. And this guide outlines the media opportunities we will present you with most often and how you can best prepare for them. So when we secure a television or newspaper opportunity, for example, here's what you can expect from our agency. We will email you the details about the request, the media outlet, and what's needed for the interview. So you really want to know all about your interview. Yes, the logistics are important, but you also really want to know a little bit about the station or the host, whomever you're going to be meeting or talking with. And also, if you're going to need visuals or props or anything in addition, we're going to put that all together for you. Um, interviews with representatives will be requested for every interview. So you're going to, we, what that means is when we find an, um, an interview opportunity, opportunity for you, we're going to need somebody to really be the person, the spokesperson that, um, that really represents your organization. Television interviews will be on camera. Um, or now post-COVID, <laughs> Zoom. Newspaper interviews will generally be conducted via phone. Sometimes they will want to go to your location, um, but phone is, has been um, definitely more common right now um, for us. And sometimes we find our next bullet point down, state or local stats may also be requested. So if you're speaking on a particular topic, make sure that you have some statistics or information to back up things that you're saying as their producer can make really cool graphics that go on screen um, or emphasize your points. Um, and just so the, the host or the reporter can also know those points for including into their story. Um, <clears throat> interviews should be coordinated, excuse me, as soon as possible. We should always be media ready. So when you're engaged with a PR firm, you're now a media ready. Um, <laughs> we really want you you have the best of success, and sometimes those media interviews mean, can we interview you at 3 o'clock today? <laughs> we didn't plan for that, but sometimes they happen that quickly, and we want to make sure that you're ready if, if that happens. In most cases, interviews are needed pretty quickly, um, we find. And in the best cases, they're needed in a few days. You should acknowledge your seat of a media request and provide status update as soon as possible or by the end of the business day. So what that means is if you get an email, um, sometimes we, we know you're busy. A, we know that. But B, sometimes we know that you're so busy and we really still need to hear from you even if you can't do it. Because if you can't do it, we have opportunity to still salvage that information and reschedule. But sometimes we won't if, we, if, it's, if, we, if it's something where we don't hear from you right away. The spokesperson, aka you, should practice message points until they feel natural. They roll off the tongue naturally. They're in your language, the type of the way, type of speak that you practice and the type of way that you handle things normally. So what do we want to do before the interview? We want to spread the word. Post information or teasers about your upcoming interview on your website, social media, email campaigns. Let your clients, customers, and colleagues know to watch you. That's pretty much as important as being on the news. <laughs> Plan and rehearse your talking points. The goal is to appear natural during your interview, so write bullets of what you're going to say. Rehearse some, but not too much where you sound like a recording. And, and there's also a pitfall there where, where, where when you rehearse too much, um, you become so reliant on that rehearsal that when you get a little tripped up, or maybe the, the conversation doesn't go exactly that way, then you're like, oh, what am I going to say next? Versus just having um, flexibility in 
in your rehearsal, in your practice, knowing that things could go a different way um, or that you don't have to say things word for word. It's okay. I also say before the interview, you can work on personal appearance. Um, maybe if there's time to get a haircut, plan your wardrobe, think about what you're being interviewed on. What's the topic? So if it's serious, maybe you want some business attire. If it's more casual, maybe you want business casual. If you are, um, whatever your trade is, whatever, let's say you're a physician, maybe you want to have your white coat. If you're a chef, maybe you want to have your, your chef attire. Whatever your profession is, is usually more visible to show um, and demonstrate that look on camera. The reporters and, and TV interviews and um, really appreciate that. And even if it's not TV, TV, um, if it's print and they want photos, that's the type of photo that they're going to, going to want to see is you in your in your um, trade profession attire. Um, some people even think about getting their teeth whitened. So we hear that a lot. Hey, just an extra little tip there. Um, so again, before the interview, shine. So hey, if you're male or female, <laughs> you might want to bring tissues or oil blotters as sometimes the lights from the cameras are bright and can make you appear shiny. Um, that could also be something that happens via w when you're under stress. Sometimes people sweat a little bit or produce oil. So sometimes those blotters, you can find them at most um, beauty stores, online, Amazon, um, or maybe grocery store, I'm not exactly sure, maybe a, a, a pharmacy, a drug, drug store. Um, you can find those types of things and they really go a long way. So again, male or female, it doesn't matter, have those things handy if you're getting ready to do a bunch of media interviews. Um, get rest. So the night, the night or the night bef nights before your interview, get plenty of rest. It actually does wonders for your interview. You'll be more natural and look great without any puffy bags under your eyes. Um, also, when we do sleep well, we tend to be able to speak well. When we don't sleep well is where you hear sometimes when we can trip over our own words or our, our cognitive ability isn't functioning at its 100% best. And so, um, those are some of the things that we are challenged with. So remember to try to get that good night's sleep um, and go through one last run through. So what that means is make sure that you've got the location if you're traveling somewhere. Um, make sure your clothes are ironed, they're picked up, even your shoes are in the right place. Um, you know, sometimes we've, we've heard the case of the missing shoe, which is, you know, you have the whole outfit prepared, but you can't find this other shoe for whatever reason. So now you're running around your house trying to find this other shoe and now you're sweating in your clothes and you're stressing even more. Don't be like that. Just just have this planned out the night before or, or at least in prior. Um, basically leave nothing like traffic, getting lost or wardrobe to chance. One time I had... Um, a client takes this media training and then um, heed the advice where he came to the TV station with an extra shirt um, after, after taking his training. And we didn't think he would ever need this extra shirt. But as it turns out, a little bit of coffee was spilled on him. Um, not even for, he wasn't the one drinking coffee. And what happened was <laughs> Um, that would have been devastating for the interview, um, but because he had this extra shirt, he was extra prepared and everything went um, went fine. So that was a really good moment for, for him and um, just one that he didn't have to stress about. Uh, a quick tip, always be early. You never want to be on time or worse, late. Um, it just adds to that stress factor and just overall, um, what happens is we've seen where people arrive, you know, just on time. It doesn't give you that breathing room, the, ro the room to really look at the reporter, have some small talk, let your body's natural adrenaline sort of relax and slow down. Um, that's a prime opportunity to slow down, to get to know a little, you know, a little bit more about the person interview interviewing you. Um, and it really makes a big difference big difference. So on time is okay, but we want you to be early. <laughs> we really want you to be early. Um, and that's even if it's a Zoom meeting, a Zoom interview, just be early. Um, it just prevents that extra step in case something happens with your computer or um, 
you can't find the login, whatever it might be, it just helps avoid certain issues. How early? I like to say 15 minutes, really. Um, so generating awareness before your interview. Use social media teasers. For example, you can say 12 hours until Fox is coming to our location. Be sure to tune in or get ready in 10 minutes. Our interview will air live on Channel 10, whatever, whatever the station is, right? You really want to tag the media outlet and the reporter involved for maximum amount of um, awareness. And again, this is before the interview. We're, we're going to get into what to do after, but before the interview, um, and sometimes these, interview are, these interviews are pre-recorded, and you can still generate a lot of awareness. You can, um, as you get to the station, take a picture, say, I'm getting ready to be interviewed. Um, as you're in the green room, we're going to talk about that in a moment. Or even after the interview is completed, and you know that it's not going to air for a few days, you can still you know, grab the logo and do a nice teaser, um, teaser post on social media, for example. Um, you want to e-blast your upcoming appearance. So, so the point of being on the news, there's so much advantage to um, your post interview. You get a link. You can um, you can post that on your social media, your website, and all. But before before you want people to tune in and actually watch your your appearance or read your article. So. E-blast, you know, it's really good to come up with an e-newsletter that explains, hey, I'm going to be, my, our article is going to be featured in this paper on this date or, you know, tune in at this time because it really gives people the opportunity to see it or read it as it comes live. Add it to your, web state, your, your website. So add the station, the logos, and the photos of the reporters. You can see a really cool example here with one of our clients and um, meeting with the photographer and the reporter made a really cool personal post. We've had some clients make a contest out of it. So use a code word, the time of the interview, or what the reporter was wearing, and then your customers can get 10% off. So you're incentivizing, incentivizing people to watch your interview. Um, and we've seen even people update their signature line or their voicemail outgoing message. So you can see the example here. Hello, this is Jane Smith. I'm not answer, not able to answer your call. Please leave a message. Also, tune in to ABC Action News this Thursday at 9 a.m. to see my interview on whatever topic. And that is just there are just some other ways to grab to grab awareness and gain that notoriety notoriety that you're looking for. So, quick tip: find out if your interview is live or recorded. And you want to find that out beforehand, but if you don't know, you definitely want to find out right then and there. That seems to be a, a big question for most of our clients. Um, we do that work for you, but um, in the case of maybe it wasn't done for you, or you're working with someone else, that's the question you want to find out. And then you also want to find out, too, if it is pre-recorded, um, when it will air. So many, so many times that, that seems to be the question of, I didn't ask that. I don't know when it's going to air. But that's a pretty important piece if we want to do the, the magic of the formula that we just talked about, about pre-interview um, promotion. So now we're at, we're, 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 we're at the interview location. We're in studio. What in studio means is you have had to travel to the news station <clears throat> to conduct your interview. They're not going to you. You're going to them. So you'll likely be taken to a green room. We want you to prep, but mostly relax in the green room. You want to take some pictures for your audience to see. Right now, um, post-COVID, the green room is a bit different than it used to be. The, the green room used to be a very busy place. Now it's a bit different um, limitations of guests in the green room. It's not as chaotic. Um, so it is a good time just to sort of relax a little bit. Rehearse. But don't rehearse too much at this point. Um, you will be walked into the actual studio by the producer or one of the producers. Um, make sure your cell phone is turned off at this point. You do not want it to ring on the set or while someone else is being interviewed. Speak quietly around the set. It's usually a live scene happening. So 
Um, doesn't matter if it's live or recording, we, they don't want your voice being picked up. So showing that level of respect will help you perhaps maybe gain another interview in the future um, if you're really in tune with how things work. Check your posture. Stretch and remain relaxed and speak slowly. These are all during your interview. So if the interview is at your location, so that means a photographer has come to you or the reporter has come to you at your location. Your location could be your place of business, could even be a park, wherever that, you know, whatever the reason is for the interview will usually dictate the location of the interview. Um, so we want to make sure they have, that they have easy access to news station cables, electricity, and for camera setup, especially if it's live. So knowing ahead of time, okay, my front door is here or a back door is here or where, wherever your doors are, and I have outlets here, um, I might have an extension cord here, having that knowledge up front will really, really be over-the-top professional when they do come. Make sure your staff is well aware of the news interview and are calm. We, do, we have seen that where, um, for whatever reason, it wasn't communicated to the whole staff that, for example, um, a main TV station was coming in, and they sort of got nervous when the camera crew walked in and started asking questions and sort of got very nervous. Am I going to be on TV? And they got really nervous, and it really could have, um, could have, you know, really changed and enhanced the level of stress. So we don't want to do that. We want everyone nice and calm. <laughs> Be aware that the reporter could be using an earpiece and communicating to the news station without you being able to hear. So we've seen that strange look on our, some of our clients' face, like, what? who's he talking to? But he's, he, if it's a live or remote interview, they're talking back to the anchor at the station. And so you might not be knowing why they're laughing and why they're talking, but they are having a conversation. And it might even be about you and what the upcoming interview is about. <clears throat> Another little pro tip is make sure news stations um, like TVs are turned off at your business or are turned on to the station that is interviewing you. So they don't want to have a shot where they're what's called B-roll, where they're taking footage of other things to supplement the video component of the interview. And in that B-roll, have a shot of a TV that has a competing news station on it. Just don't do it. Make their lives easy. Those extra touches make their lives easy and therefore your lives easy and give you a greater chance to be interviewed again. So if the interview is via phone, so conduct an interview using a landline if you have one. So many of us don't have one anymore. Um, and then that's, if that's the case, try to have your call waiting turned off. Every phone is different. Everyone has a different model. Look through your settings. See if that is an option because that's the worst that you're talking and your, your, your voice is sort of blanking out and then, or you didn't hear what they said and you're saying repeat it and it might be like a live phone interview. It just um, causes a little bit more um, of that stress to happen. <laughs> Make sure there's no background noise as well. This could be a fan or a TV or something else that's on or make sure that you're not, especially if this is a radio interview and you're on the phone, that you're not actually like turn, turned tuned in and the volume turned up because you're trying to hear your own voice or whatever it might be. Turn it all off. Make sure everything's quiet. Do not use speakerphone if you can. Um, try to communicate and, and speak directly into the phone and or your earbuds if you can. Um, Speakerphone just sort of adds another layer removed from the sound quality. Um, and then now, post-COVID times, we're, here, we're really practicing um, phone quality or sound quality. Um, some, we, we know our, our media colleagues are doing interviews in their closet, wherever it is that has the least amount of echo um, will really benefit you. Now, even when you're on the phone, we want you to still practice posture speaking slowly, and speaking clearly. Stand up and walk around, even while you're on the phone. Yeah, we know, they can't see you, but um, it's more natural, and you can use your hands, you can just talk exactly how you would, but you're on the phone. And it really will benefit and change the way that the, the whole interview sounds. Um, it makes a big difference for you um, and, and the overall message that you're trying to get across. Okay, so you've, you've survived the interview. We knew you would, and we know that you did great. <laughs> but 
But after the interview, you can ask for a picture, sure, be, be courteous. Um, if it's not live, feel free to ask when it will air. We want you to ask that question. You'll be walked out of the studio um, if you're in studio or the camera crew will leave. They won't, there won't be much lingering around. If you're in studio, be prepared to be immediately as, you know, escorted out. There's not really any lingering time. There's really not, sometimes there's not even time to, you know, <clears throat> properly have a thank you or a closing goodbye. Sometimes it's just they're already reporting on the next subject. Um, so just know that that could happen, and it's nothing personal. <laughs> it's just the way that the news rolls. Um, it's it's 24-7 news, and they've got a lot going on. Um, post on social media any pictures taken. You can opt to purchase the clip or the paper if you want to have that physical copy, but we really recommend also trying to find the link online. We will do that for you if you have us on your side, um, but always try to find that link. And use everything that you have, photos, tagging, and anything that you have from the interview on marketing, upcoming marketing materials, proposals, even portfolios. Don't be shy about your media interview. It's special. So we want to talk about pitfalls to avoid. Never ask to see the story or article prior to it being published. That's a very big faux pas in our industry. Nobody likes it. The reporter sort of might be frustrated. Um, if they're the journalist or the reporter, um, and they don't really ever, ever have anyone see their work except for their boss um, before it's published. The prizes are usually not good. So never push brand new talking points, ideas, or props without prior conversation. Um, your publicist arranges these interviews for a um, very specific reason. They, the, the, either the editor, reporter, anchor, it's really um, expecting it to flow a certain way. And so if you have a brand new idea that you didn't previously arrange, but yet all of a sudden think about it and start talking about that, it really can change and jeopardize the whole media interview. There's online or on-screen graphics um, that are pre-arranged. There's a whole lot that, that is scripted, um, teleprompter scripts or um, what the reporter believes, um, even if it's in print, how the interview is going to go. So um, try not to add any new talking points um, unless it was previously arranged, of course. Avoid corresponding with the news directly. Let your PR pro handle this. You can inadvertently jeopardize relationships with your business. We've seen this happen where um, a, a colleague of ours, um, they had a client that was copied on some correspondence and then they started to ask the producer some more questions, pitch ideas, and um, ask for for more favors, and the producer ended up telling our colleague, so not, not for our, our agency, not one of our clients, but our colleague, that um, she ended up kind of telling them not to pitch this expert anymore. So we, we would never want that to happen to any of our clients. Always make sure you're in the know of what station you're talking to, what reporter you're talking with prior, um, know their name. We never want you to say, hmm, hi. Now, what station are you with? We want you and them to be in sync. We want you and them to feel like this is a genuinely great connection as it should be. So um, it, it's really kind of a faux pas. We want you to really know who they are prior to the interview. Avoid putting two stations together for a photo. While this is really an unlikely situation, I've actually seen it happen where we're at a press conference and a client wanted a picture and said, can you guys just get together? And it's like, no, <laughs> they can't. They're competing. They're competitors. Um, make sure you're concise and respectful of time and avoid seeing future topics, as we discussed about why earlier. Maximizing media interviews. Remember, your media interview, you're, they're genuine news. They're not paid ads. So talking more about you or your product or what's for sale or the price, that's that's not what the media is looking for. They're looking for an expert to relate to the public and the community and help the public and the community in some way. The more you can remember that, the more you have a likelihood of being picked up again by that news station or reporter and, and have future success. So it's really important. We've even seen, um, especially with national news, 
they want to see video of the expert prior to them saying yes or no for a media interview. And so if that interview that we, if, if that's the only video we, the person might have and they look at it and they just like, oh, that person's too salesy. I can't, I can't book them on my show. We don't want that to happen to you. These are genuine news. You will be seen as a credible expert. This is so amazing. The reason why that is, is you're not paying for this media interview. We don't pay the stations to pick up on our stories. We pitch them your ideas and they say yes or no. And they usually say yes because, because we're able to position them in ways that really put you as the expert, that you have something to talk about that's special and unique and also beneficial to their audience. So being seen as an expert is great. You have someone else talking about you and your service, your business, your organization. It's not something you've paid for. You also want to have a, a plan in place for how you will handle new inquiries. So be ready. The phone will ring more, or if, you're, if you've directed the audience to go to a website, you, website, you will probably have inquiries there. So you never want to be caught off guard where, I didn't think of that. I didn't think that people would actually be calling or asking to buy whatever it is or to donate. Have all that in place. Know that that's very, very highly likely to happen when you're on the news. You're speaking with a mass audience and not just on the news but then they will likely pick up on your story and post it on their social media on their website so think about it people who have seen the interview or read the article then can see it online and in different formats you're really really being exposed to a lot of people and so be prepared to have those inquiries come in we really appreciated your time and hopefully this this presentation has prepared you um, for media interviews um, we know that you're going to do great <laughs> for any interview that comes your way especially if you follow these points and um, remember remember these best practices to put into place if you do have any questions feel free to let us know we want to help you we want to help you succeed and make this a stress-free interview and also very beneficial interview. We want this to be a power play where you get more media interviews and see really a lot of success in your organization. So again, thank you for your time. I'm Jennifer Vickery with National Strategies PR. Um, I could be reached um, by visiting our website, nationalstrategiespublicrelations.com. Thank you so much.